Hello Capricorn, Sun Signs, Rising Signs and Moons. This is your April Tarot Scope from me, Kim, at Expressions of the Universe. And we have a full pink moon in Libra on April 7th. And it will be hitting you in the second house, which is hitting you right in your wallet, in your money pocket. Um, also, it'll be highlighting the things that you value it's also highlighting material things, uh, especially at the home, the, the real estate, the place where you live. And so there could be some big changes around that. And you know, there's a lot of craziness in the world right now. Um, but I think that for the Capricorn sun signs, rising signs and moons, with there being such a big focus on the second house, you can... Go ahead and clear the clutter from your home. Take this time. Make it an opportunity to beautify the home. It is the full pink moon, so that is all about love and balance and harmony. The new moon in Taurus, which is more of that earthy energy, will be highlighting your first house, which is all about you, yourself, where you're going, the image that you're putting out into the world, how you want to be perceived in the world. This could be a total makeover. Um, it's also the way that you feel about yourself. So that's where those highlights are. I've already pre-shuffled some of these cards to save time. Your angel card is gratitude. This is talking about, and this I think is really good for Capricorns because with how the world is changing so much. I know so many Capricorns that are in the banking and finance industry that is part of Capricorn energy. I'm not saying all of you are, but this is also about big business and your businesses in general, your work life, and there's so much change happening. A lot of you aren't even working. So gratitude comes in to remind you that you need to start counting your blessings. If you're complaining or feeling sorry for yourself, count your blessings so that you can bring more positivity in. Now this card specifically is saying your guidance is to count your blessings. Ah, oh, I didn't say, I know what I'm talking about. When you say thank you to the universe for its gifts, it responds generally. Gener generously to you. Angel wisdom reminds you to say thank you for all that you have, the intangible as well as the tangible. And that second house is all about the tangible things that we have. Whether you say thank you from your heart, more whenever you say thank you from your heart, more is bestowed on you. For gratitude is a key to opening the doors to universal abundance. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude and open yourself to receive love and plenty into your life. Your angels will smile on you and your affirmation is, I am grateful for everything in my life. Even the things that suck, when we see them as a lesson or a blessing, we're actually turning that karma, that energy around. Your crystal card, it's joy and gratitude and it is kunzite and it's two kunzite and hidden night and it's yin yang sign so this is about bringing balance into your life the full pink moon in libra is about bringing balance and harmony into your life and it's joy and gratitude so here we have confirmation you have to start counting your blessings if you're complaining about anything then you need to turn that energy around. Um, we all always have so much to be grateful for. It's up to each and every one of us to sit down and think of those blessings. Uh, you know, count your blessings, write them in a journal. If you can, every single day, write three things down that were fantastic and wonderful that you have to be grateful for from the day before so that you can keep real life into perspective. Your animal totem. 
and it's stag spirit and it says take the lead this is asking you to stand up in a leadership position this could be in your community this could be amongst your friends or in your family this is saying don't have a meltdown at this time you need to be strong for everyone else around you it will give you a sense of purpose if you can do that Oh, I love this. Happy, happy card comes up. And this is confirming that joy and gratitude card. So this is telling me that happy times are on their way to you. Uh, I love that. And it also is saying to me there's going to be some sort of a celebration coming for, you know, at least one of you. If not several of you, there will be something that you're going to be able to celebrate sometime in the month of April. All right, so details, details is coming up. Whenever I see that card, it makes me think of definitely Mercury energy, makes me think of Virgo energy. This is about paying attention to the tiny details. Oh, sorry, baby. I just stepped on my, my beagle. Get that up there so you can see all the little minuscule depictions in this card paying attention to the details in your life, paying attention to your daily routines, uber important right now. And I can't make this up. The deer. This is also, it's just like that stag. This is talking about quiet leadership. So you're getting a double dose of this. So that's just even further confirmation. This deer talks about quiet leadership, quiet power, um, gentleness, and diplomacy. All right, let's see what the planets have to say for you guys. So you'll have to comment me, you little, you little mountain goats or sea goats, depending on which, which that is you are. Doesn't even make sense. Um, let me know how you're doing out there. I know everybody's really going through a difficult time. All right, so we have the ninth house. We have Mercury. That was those details. We have Mars, which is ego and stubbornness. The ninth house is about having faith and Sagittarius energy, which is also ninth house energy. So this ninth house, so we have fire, fire, fire that is fed by air. So you know air feeds a fire. Um, <clears throat> this is talking about ego. This is talking about forcefulness and stubbornness. The ninth house, though, is asking you to broaden your horizons to see the bigger picture. This is also telling me to tell you to have, hold on to faith and hope that everything will work out okay. The ninth house often also talks about foreign travel, but you know none of us are traveling anywhere right now, but you may be able to do that in your head and dream about vacations to come. The underlying card is Mercury, so it, I'm going to go back to that details card. That is this energy. This is um, talking about paying attention to details of things that you're reading, things that you're seeing on social media. You have to be very discerning. This is also talking about staying connected and communicating with people the way that you feel so that you can express yourself. Um, and it's also talking about changing your, the way that you're thinking about this whole situation. The Mars card is coming up to remind you that in the past, this is what held you up. Uh, the ego, the stubbornness, the argumentativeness, possibly arguments and fighting ha is what has hindered previous relationships. Um, I do see some a Sagittarius energy coming in, but this is also freedom loving this is about your thoughts and beliefs and the faith that you have that everything will work out okay. Interesting. Let's see what these cards have to say 
on top of what we already have. See how it could play into each other. All right, so on top of the ninth house card, we have more Gemini, I think. That's going perfectly with that Mercury card and also confirming to me that a lot of Capricorns need to expand their thinking, seeing a bigger picture. Um, and this has to do a lot with your roots, your family, your ancestors, the people that are surrounding you, uh, people that you are not seeing or haven't seen for a while that you need to get into communication with them with that Mercury card. Touch base with your family and your friends. Um, you know, just a quick phone call or a text or, you know, ha whatever means, an email just to touch, check in with them and make sure that they're all okay. So we have a grand trine full of blessings that are coming through and given the color of that air card this is talking about a grand trine and um, when it comes to our thoughts and our communications and this is asking you at this time to start thinking differently speaking differently communicating differently now on top of the sagittarius card we have the 12th house and and it's escape so this is talking about not wanting to deal with these problems, not wanting to deal with maybe a Sagittarius directly that could be causing you problems or not wanting to get into arguments. So you're going to run away from and avoid that situation. This is also talking to me about past life wounds that need to be filtered out during this time, filtered out during the phases of the moon. I'm going to show you that. Um, this is also saying that you've been too isolated and keeping yourself away from people in an avoidance type of situation. And if you're not dealing with this, which I'm picking up family members, um, that's going to be part of your karma that you're just going to continue. This is a time where you need to be clearing out your karma. Paying back past karmic debts. Just because you don't want to deal with a situation or you're avoiding it doesn't mean that you just get to walk away from the situation is what I'm hearing. Um, because with that 12th house, if you're going to act like an ostrich with your head in the sand, just because you're avoiding it doesn't mean that it's, ever go it's not going to go away. You will have to pay the piper at some point. All right, and your final cards. All right, so it's the Five of Cups, and it is in reverse position. This is a deep sadness and a longing for love, for peace, for harmony, and the sense and feeling that these things have eluded you. Um, it's not as bad. It's just, it's kind of like a little bit of a depression. I think Capricorns could be in a little bit of a depressive state, longing, wanting. So when the card is upright, if you look at the cups that are here. So this guy in the picture, he's sad and lamenting over the three cups that have spilled and fallen to the ground. But in his stubbornness, he's refusing to see that there are still two cups behind him. I'm going to go back to gratitude with this card as a confirmation because if we get so stuck in our stubbornness and our ego, we will refuse to see all of the blessings that are still there, still around us. And that is what that card is saying to me. The next card, the underlying situation with Mercury of communication, the fourth house of roots, ancestors, family, friends, it is the Ace of Cups. So this is new beginnings of love. This is new, renewed sense of love in your relationships around the home. And I love that. So this is saying something really fantastic is coming your way 
and your change of mind, your change of your perception and your thoughts would be opening you up to that. All right, the star. One of my favorite cards in any tarot deck is saying, hold on to hope, hold on to faith, because there is so much still shining down on you. I love that. And then your final, final card that is coming up. It is the Six of Wands. And this is saying that there is a victory that is imminent. You will win. It will be a win-win situation. You will finally get what it is that you want and that you have been longing for. It's coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. So if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Comment me. Show me some love. Uh, be sure to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, and my website at expressionsoftheuniverse.com. And when my head comes up here, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead, click that, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so that you get notifications of future videos. Until next time, bye little goats.